Hi friends, this is the Nero Research and welcome to the part number 7 of Cryptocurrency Trading Bot Tutorial. In the previous video we have completed creation of all required components of the Trading Bot event loop, like market data receiver that receives data from the exchange, data analyzer that seeks entry and exit points for positions, position manager responsible for the amount allocated to each position, risk manager responsible for our stop losses, and trade executor responsible for trading mechanics. But unfortunately we have received negative result because we lost all our money and our strategy is not profitable yet. In these and upcoming videos we will figure out areas where our strategy underperforms and we'll optimize our strategy in order to achieve a profitable level. Let's look at the price chart in order to figure out when our strategy makes money and when do we lose money. Currently I am using Ethereum against US dollar chart from Bitfinex with 30 minutes time frame. By the way, in the upcoming videos we'll use backtesting process in order to figure out what is the best time frame for our trading bot. But for now, let's use 30 minutes time frame. And of course, we use 20 periods moving average. So, when price closes about 20 periods moving average, we open a long position and keep long position open until price closes below 20 periods moving average. Then we close long position. In this specific case on the chart, we can potentially make about 11.5% of profit, what is very good by the way. Similarly for short, when price closes below 20 periods moving average, we open a short position according to our strategy and close this short position when price closes above 20 periods moving average. In this specific case, we can potentially make 3.3% of profit, what is also not bad. As you see, our strategy is profitable only in two cases. The first one in case of the uptrend and the second one in case of the downtrend, as on the chart. But when do we lose money? We lose money in cases like this, when we have no trend and price moves in the range from its resistance level to the support level and back from the support to resistance and over and over again. According to our strategy, when price closes about 20 periods moving average, we have to open a long position, like at this point. And probably somewhere here, when our stop loss will be triggered, we will fix losses. And again, at this point, when price closes about 20 periods moving average, we'll open a long position and we'll fix losses somewhere here. And again, probably here we'll open a long position and we'll keep this long position open probably till this moment, where our stop loss will be triggered again. Here we'll open new long position and we'll fix losses somewhere here. At this point we'll probably open a short position, because price closes below 20 periods moving average, and our stop loss will be triggered at this point. And again, again, again we'll fix losses. As you see, our strategy is a trend following strategy, and it does not work when price moves in the range. Thus, our today's optimization goal is to figure out how to avoid trading in the periods like this, when the price moves in the range. There are several options how to detect trend and range. They are support and resistance breakout, stationarity test and average directional index indicator. Per my opinion, the first two options are more reliable but more difficult to implement, and the last one is less reliable than the options above, but is very easy to understand and to implement. Let, let's look at these options in details. 
In order to use support and resistance breakout, bot has algorithmically identified support level somewhere in this area and resistance level somewhere in this area. So let's mark the range. It will look like this. So when price moves within the range, bot stops any trading activities until price breaks out this range, so closes with confirmation above its resistance level or closes with confirmation below its support level. That means that trend is an uptrend or downtrend is present and bot can open long and short positions respectively. Stationarity test is another statistical form of trend and range identification. In general, price movement of cryptocurrency or any other asset is a non-stationary process, because its mean and variance are not constant values. This is caused by the presence of the trend, either uptrend or downtrend. But price movement can be stationary process within a certain time frame. Let's look at the charts. Let's begin with non-stationary time series. We clearly see some downtrend in this case, and it is the case when our strategy is profitable. We can open a short position somewhere here and close this short position somewhere here and make some money, of course. In case of the stationary process, price moves within a support and resistance level. And that is the case when we have stopped any trading activities and wait until the <coughs> process turns into non-stationary again. In order to identify whether this process is a stationary within a certain time frame or non-stationary, we can apply a popular augmented Dickey Fuller test that can tell us whether we trade or stop trading until process turns into non-stationary again. Finally, average directional index indicator. This technical indicator we will use in order to optimize our trading strategy. It shows the strengths of the trend and its values are ranging from 0 to 100. ADX indicator has several levels. If ADX value is about 25, that means that we have either strong or very strong trend. That's actually what we need in order to make our strategy profitable. If ADX value is below 25, that means that price moves in the range and we need to avoid any trading activities. Let us apply average directional index indicator to our chart. As you see, when price moves in the range within its support and resistance levels, average directional index value is far below 25. Probably when we will optimize our strategy, we will uh, choose a bit lower value of ADX, not 25, but probably 20, to identify whether price moves in the range or in the trend. Now let's look at the case with downtrend. At this point, we can open a short position because price closes below moving average value and ADX value is about 25. That's actually what we need to make our strategy profitable. One more thing you need to know about ADX is that its values does not show any direction of the trend. ADX value shows only the presence of the trend. Well, that was all for today. In the next video we'll use ADX indicator from technical indicators library in order to optimize and improve our strategy. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!